Hey, thanks for tuning in to this week's online message. I have a really special treat and a really, uh, I would say, probably one of the more exciting things that I've been able to see grow in ministry here uh, happening today. Uh, normally, if we ever get guest speakers, we ever get people who, who uh, are preaching, uh, they don't have the ability to record. And we don't have the ability to record on the weekends live. And so oftentimes I still have to do my own message along the way. And part of the vision that, that we have had here at Emily Wesleyan Church has been the vision to reach, raise, and release. When you look at scripture biblically, this is the purpose of us as a church, that we're to, to reach those for Christ. Once we reach them, uh, it's our role to come alongside and disciple them, raising them up, and then to release them to go do what God has asked them to do. And so today, as part of uh, the releasing process, I actually have uh, a good friend of mine who is going to be bringing the message and the word here today. His name is Jacob Talbert. I've known Jacob more than 10 years at this point in my life. I've baptized most of his children at this point. And we have this ability to, uh, to hear what words God has given him today. He is currently on a path for his call to be a, a licensed minister. And so as part of the releasing process, giving him some opportunities to be able to give a message and share the word. And so I hope you enjoy what he brings for you here today. Well, thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, my name is Jacob Talbert. I will be bringing you the word this morning or today or whenever it is that you're watching this. I hope that it finds you well and it's uh, my great pleasure to be able to do this. Um, we've been in James for a while. If you've tuned into previous episodes, you will have um, walked all the way through James with us from chapter one all the way through uh, through four now. Um, I think it's a great book. I'm loving it. Um, I know a lot of people struggle, um, you know, with the difficulty. James calls us out a lot. And it's it's kind of difficult for us to maybe accept where we're at in that. Uh, but I love it because it's black and white. He tells us what to do, what not to do. Very clear instructions. Um, sets us up for success, really. And I love that. I don't have to guess, well, what did this mean? What was he talking about there? So um, I'm really happy uh, to be in James today. Uh, one of the things that we struggle with a lot is how do we accept the truths that James has been telling us, um, you know, guarding our tongue, um, watching out for selfish ambition and those kinds of things. And, you know, really our part is to allow God to move in our hearts. Just listen and, and trust by faith that this really is the best for us and allow God to do the work for us and just be open. That's going to require faith. We have to believe that what is outlined here is really for our best and that that uh, God's going to do a work in us that's really going to make life better for us. Um, one of the things that we have to do is we have to die to ourselves. That's pretty difficult for a lot of us, but if we uh, read a, a lot of Paul's writings, he says, take off the old self, put on the new self. Um, your old self has been crucified with Christ so that you may live a new life in him. Those kinds of things. So um, we just need to take those truths to heart and put on the righteousness of God. Um, last week, we kind of touched on the idea that the, the conflict in life and the, the times that we have struggle and quarrels, that's really um, because of our own selfishness. Um, I'm just going to reference a, a verse from last week, James 4, 1 and 2. What is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is it not the source of your pleasures that wage, wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you murder. You are envious and can't obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Then James goes on to say, you don't receive because you're asking with the wrong motives. So we really have to look at our own heart condition. And that, that makes me think of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is preaching. All these things that you've heard by human wisdom and that you understand from the law of Moses, they focus on outward behaviors. And Jesus says the outward behavior isn't enough. 
we need to look at the heart. And so he, he gives us a lot of, of guidance and you know, rules to live by that focus on our heart condition. And towards the end of that, Jesus also gives us this, this uh, picture. He says, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. And so that's similar to what James is saying here. You don't have because you don't ask. And Jesus says, ask, look for it, and it'll be given to you. And you know, further on he goes and says, you guys, you guys are uh, earthly fathers, and you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will God give you what's good? So we trust that what we receive from God is good. And when we ask, we will receive when we ask with the right motive and the right heart condition. So we talked a lot about wisdom as we were going through James here. We talked about um, worldly, worldly wisdom and that that's kind of uh, based in envy. Uh, and back in James 3, 14 through 16, it says, but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not coming down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every evil practice. So James is really clear there. When our heart condition is turned toward ourselves, when we are selfish, that opens up all sorts of evil. Other translations say all kinds of evil or evil of every kind. And that's specifically talking about our selfishness. So when we have a heart condition that's focused on ourselves and the desires that we wish to have for ourselves, we're, we're open up to all kinds of evil. But God is generous and gracious to us. And we learned last week um, in James 4, 6, God gives us more grace, okay? It says, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when we have humility of heart, we receive grace from God. And I don't know about you, but I don't want God to be opposed to me. And James here is kind of quoting Solomon, and he's saying, God's opposed to the proud. So if you want God to be against you, have that root of pride in your life. But God actually gives us grace, and he says, be humble. Elsewhere in scripture, it says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time. So it's God that's looking out for your best interest and you don't have to promote yourself. So that brings us up to this week. And our scripture this week is gonna be James 4, 13 through 15. James says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You are a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. So we've talked a lot about wisdom when we went through James. We talked about asking for wisdom, receiving wisdom, wisdom from above, worldly wisdom, um, even that some of this wisdom is demonic. Okay? We want true godly wisdom in our lives, and that's what James is trying to teach us here. And at first glance, this passage seems kind of weird, kind of like it's going against what we would think is wisdom. You know, I hear all the time, if you want to be successful, set a goal, make a plan, work hard toward that goal. Once you reach that goal, set a bigger one, work harder, and so on and so on and so on. And that's the worldly wisdom for success in this life. And James isn't speaking against that wisdom, but he's saying there's more wisdom to be had in that idea. 
he says, when when you're going at something, you're setting a goal. You're saying, I'm going to go here. I'm going to engage in business. I'm going to turn a profit. That's going to make it so I can buy a bigger house, have better toys, put some money aside, have a good retirement. All these things. It's focused on self. And James says, that's not what we really need to be focused on here. He says, leave room for God. Okay. We need to have the idea that God has a plan for our lives. And he's working out his perfect plan by his will. And we need to leave room to rely on him and not just on the goals that we set for ourselves. As humans, we often seek the path of least resistance. We want luxury. We want comfort. And even, you know, spe specifically today, in a technologically advanced world, we have machines that do most of the work for us. And we like it that way. Um, but we seek our own comfort. And now I'm not saying, and neither is James, that we shouldn't make plans, that we shouldn't set goals and we shouldn't work toward it. You know, none of these things are bad in and of themselves. You know, making a profit, saving up for retirement, having a nice house or toys or any of that stuff, it's not bad. You know, I fully believe that God has created this world uh, for us to enjoy. Um, but our first priority it should be our relationship with him. We should build our relationship with him and enjoy him. And that needs to be in the front of our minds, okay? Our first priority. Everything else is a bonus, but how often do we get that backward? Right? We're like, all right, I'm going to go to my job. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to uh, make money, make a profit, buy my toys, play with my toys, you know, work till I'm retired, and then maybe I'll have some time to volunteer for ministry, and maybe I'll have some time to actually sit down and have a quiet time with the Lord. You know, when I'm retired, then then I'll be able to do these things. Um, but really, that should be our first priority. Our relationship with the Lord needs to come ahead of everything else in life. You know. <clears throat> When we think about life and we set our goals and, and we say that we're going to do these things without the Lord, it's folly. It's almost sure to not bring the contentment and joy that we otherwise could have. So James is telling us not that we shouldn't make goals, but we need to humble ourselves and understand that God has a plan that's bigger than ourselves and that actually is going to make life better. He says we first need to humble ourselves. Like, like I was talking about elsewhere in scripture, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And this is going to protect us from the folly of pride. And it also is going to help us to understand that we don't know what the future holds for us. James is uh, fairly straightforward, and he says that our days are short. Going back to uh, chapter 1, um, he's given us kind of an overview of chapter 1, and he tells us this in uh, verse 11. For the sun rises with a scorching heat and withers the grass, and its flower falls off when the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too is the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. So he's telling us life's short, right? And this is a theme that's woven throughout scripture, the brevity of life. Um, and we, we understand that. We, we get that life short. But James here is saying consider that when you're making plans. You don't know what your life's going to be. Rely on God. Um, this, this is perhaps most famously outlined in Psalm 90. Uh, it was written by Moses, and he's kind of lamenting, uh, the, <laughs> lamenting death, really, um, after having wandered in the wilderness. Um, at this point, I think it's estimated that Moses has performed 
over a million funerals, and he's kind of worn out by this idea that life is short. And uh, Moses opens this with adoration. So uh, Psalm 90, verse 1 and 2 goes like this. Lord, you have been our dwelling place from generation to generation. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. I love that. It's great. Moses is starting off with a prayer, and he's thanking the Lord, saying he's, he's been the dwelling place. Um, before everything, he's acknowledging God. And this is just a side note. Um, it's not really pertinent to our lesson here. But how great is it to acknowledge God for who he is? Um, when we read through the Psalms, we see all sorts of God's character being revealed and reinforced to us. And it's really great to keep that in front of ourselves. If we really understand how great the Lord is and who he is, then obeying his commands becomes a lot easier because we understand that he is for us and not against us. And it's actually what leads to successful and faithful worship. Uh, A.W. Tozer in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy, he has a quote, he says, what comes to mind when you think of God is the most important thing about you. You see, if we have a wrong view of God and who he is, then we don't really know him. And it becomes difficult for us to accept his truth and his law and to be able to follow him faithfully as we should. And so when we get a right view of God, that all becomes a lot easier and our problems become a lot smaller. Um, it ends up putting us in position to actually truly worship him. But anyway, back to the psalm. Moses is giving praise, and in the midst of the praise, he gets down to business here. He says that God turns men back to dust. He gives us lots of examples of, of this. It's really poignant. It's a great psalm, and I encourage anyone to go back and read it um, and be encouraged by Moses' words here. Um, but he ultimately says that it was because sin that God put a limit on the length of human life. And in verse 12, he makes a request of God. He says, So teach us to number our days, so that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Moses is saying that we show God a heart of wisdom when we understand that our life is short. It's wisdom, just like James has been talking about. And we've been kind of going back and forth between Solomon and James here. And now even Moses is saying, we need wisdom in our life. And it's wisdom to understand that our days are short. And so with that in mind, we need to be okay with either wasting our lives on our own selfish desires and all the negativity and evil that comes about through that, or we need to rely on God. James says that we ought to make our plans, but understand that God has the final say. And this is an idea that, again, James is getting from Solomon. Back in Proverbs 16, 9, Solomon's telling us, he says, the heart of man plans his way, but Yahweh directs his steps. And looking back into this, I think this is just Solomon restating what he told us in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. To trust in Yahweh with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So you see, James isn't telling us, don't plan, but he's saying, leave room for God to guide us through. And when we don't, that's arrogance. So this whole idea of making a plan for our lives 
and setting out and trying to do that, it gets confusing and it gets difficult. And I'm no stranger to that journey. You see, it was probably six or seven years ago when I started on this, this journey that's led me to this point right now. Um, I decided that it would be good if I had more time in life that I could spend with the Lord and that I could spend in ministry and maybe helping other people out or you know, just being available for whatever God had for me. And that caused me to make plans. Um, one of the plans that I made was to find another career, sell my house. My wife and I decided that it would be a good idea to that essentially sell everything and move into a fifth wheel and travel around the country. Um, so I was making plans, but along the way, we have given God the opportunity to direct our steps. So from the minute we set off on this journey, we decided that we would be on the road seeking for what God had for us next. So this required a lot of prayer. It required a lot of trust, and it required just us leaning into him and observing what was going on around us and trying to figure out the best thing that we could possibly do. In our minds, this was probably about a five-year commitment, and we figured in about that amount of time, the Lord would show us what he had for us, and we would be able to find a place and settle down, and uh, it was going to work out great for us. Well, we all know what happened in 2020. COVID kind of rained down upon everyone and totally ruined everybody's plans. So I don't feel bad about that. Everyone else's plans got ruined too, but, but ours did as well. And so we were kind of stationary for over a year. We didn't get to travel. We didn't get to do what we had thought that we needed to do. And in that time, um, the Lord gave me a really wonderful gift. And it was awesome. He allowed me to have quality time with my family without distraction and interruption. And it was a thing that I didn't realize at the time, but had been a desire of my heart for a while. And so it was awesome that God had given me that gift to really be able to be with my family. And then when, when COVID ended and we were able to travel again, we made these plans and we had, we had planned and made reservations actually across the country for like the next year. Um, and the first stop on our journey, the Lord said, hey, wait here for a while. And we've been here ever since. And it's been awesome. And he's opened up doors to ministry that I could never imagine. And it's only been possible because we left room for the Lord to direct our steps. And so closing today, I'd like you to keep that in mind that we all make plans. We all have to do what we need to do to survive. But is in the midst of that, in the midst of trying to achieve our goals, in the midst of that survival, that the Lord will work in our lives. But we have to let him. So let's acknowledge that our days are short, that we only have a little bit of time um, that we can dedicate to the Lord and allow him to show us where to go and what to do in our life. Uh, during that amount of time. I'm going to leave you with the last verse in chapter 4 of James, verse 17. He says, Therefore, to one who knows the right thing and does not do it, to him it is sin. So if we know the right thing to do and don't do it, it's sin. And James just got done telling us one of those right things is to leave room for the Lord to direct your steps. So I hope you have time to ponder that this week and come back next week for more truth that James is going to lead us into. Thanks for tuning in. Well, I hope that you really enjoyed that message from uh, Jacob coming through uh, the end of James chapter 4. Next week, he's actually going to be back, and he's going to take us through the first part of James chapter 5. And, you know, listening to him and see this and, and really walking out our faith and seeing these things, I, I, I want to close us in prayer. And I want to thank Jacob for being able to fill in for me and to... Uh, take this step of faith in what God has for him and this releasing for him as he chases his call. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, 
We thank you and come together here today. And Lord, I just ask that uh, you would help us become, become the, the very thing you've asked us to, that we would find that purity in our life to, to push through and that we would find through our trials pure joy. Because we know that it is you, Lord, working on us and through us. And so, Lord, thank you. Hope you guys all enjoyed uh, this time here and uh, that your word from Jacob. We'll see you next time.